This video is brought to you by Audioblox. Jordy here for Cinecam.net and you're watching Creative Tuesday. And we've got five more super easy visual effects that you can create inside Adobe Premiere Pro. Because that's right, our previous video got over a million views. So I'm thinking that you would like this one too. But first up, I'd like to thank our sponsor Audioblox, which is an online library for music and sound effects. For a single price per year, you can download unlimited files, which makes it very interesting to try out different sound effects, mix them together without having to break the bank. All the sound effects that you will hear throughout this video and the nice tune that is playing in the background all came from Audioblox. To check it out yourself, follow the first link in the description below. Starting off with the first effect, the Harry Potter Invisible Cloak. What you're going to need is a green screen and a dark fabric. We are using an old brown curtain for that. Put them on top of each other so that one side is green and the other one is dark. Place your camera on a tripod and let your actor put on the green screen. Keep the camera rolling and jump out of the frame to have an empty shot as well. Now jumping into Premiere Pro, you place the empty shot on the bottom of your timeline and your green screen shot on top of that. Search for the ultra key effect and drag it to the top clip. Now with the color picker from the ultra key, you can select the green to remove it. We have actually a dedicated tutorial on how all the controls of the ultra key works and you can find that video in the description below. And because we have that empty shot in the background, it now seems like we can see through that cloak. Lorenzo! Where are you? Lorenzo! Where are you? Lorenzo! Or you don't always need to have a green screen to pull off a chroma key. If you can wait until there's a clean blue sky outside, simply film your subject from a low angle until that blue sky fills up the entire background. Important is that you expose for that background, so it's best that you close your aperture or use an ND filter, which are essentially sunglasses for your camera. If your subject is too much underexposed, then use a reflector to bounce some lights back. You can also use a white foam board for that. Then going back into Premiere Pro, we can do the exact same thing. Drag the ultra key effect to your clip and with the color picker select the blue to remove the sky. Underneath your clip, you can place a stock image or video of a different sky. And this is a common technique called sky replacement. The question that we often get is, what is the difference between a blue key and a green key? Well, essentially, there is no difference. In the old days, we would usually pick blue, as film is more sensitive for blue colors, which makes it easier to pull off a key. Digital cameras, however, are more sensitive to green colors, which is why the green screen is so common. Now, blue screens are still used when your talent is wearing something green, as that is, of course, hard to key in front of a green screen. Next up is a fun magic trick with colors. You want to wear a deep saturated t-shirt. Now make sure that the colors of that t-shirt does not come back anywhere else in the background of your video. Jumping back into Premiere Pro, with your clip selected, head over to the Lumetri panel. On the bottom, you will find the HSL secondary tab. With the color picker, I can select the color of that t-shirt. By enabling the mask under the color selectors, you will see what Lumetri has already selected. But it's probably not going to be ideal. So from the top, you can choose the colors that need to be selected. The top arrow defines the selection, and the bottom arrow will feather that selection for a smoother transition. The next selector is the saturation. Since our t-shirt is well saturated, I know that I have to select more of the right sides. There are a few red elements visible in the background, but since they are not as saturated, I can leave them out of the selection. And finally is the lightness or exposure of the red color. Play around with these settings until your mask selection looks good. You can then go ahead and disable the mask view. At the bottom, you will then see a bunch of color controls, which you can use to change the color of the red t-shirt to your desire. Did you know I could do magic? Nothing in my sleeves? If you want all the colors to be desaturated except for your t-shirt, then you want to click on the invert mask button. Now everything but your t-shirt is selected. And this means we can just decrease the saturation from the slider below to make everything black and white except for that one red t-shirt. Now, lightning is quite easy to make inside Premiere Pro, as there's literally an effect called lightning. However, it's pretty unstable, which is quite ironic for an effect called lightning. And that's why we're first going to create a black video or a black solid. Drag this on top of your impact clip. You can already go ahead and change the blending mode of the black solids to linear dodge add. 
On this layer, we're going to add the lightning effect. There's a start and end point for the lightning trail. When you select the effect, you can drag those points from your program monitor. Place one on the top of your clip and the other one where it should impact. Now, normally we should animate one of the points to let the lightning come in, but that's what doesn't work. And that is why I'm going to animate the position of the black solid, starting from outside of the screen back to the default position. But to sell the effect even better, we're going to add a small explosion to the impact. On video blocks, I found this stock clip, which I can use, but you can also search the web for a free alternative. Simply add this explosion to the impact, scale and reposition it. Finally, change the blending mode to screen to remove the black background. As a final touch, you could also add a global flash to your shot. For this, I'm creating a new color solid and choose white. Drag this white solid to the top of your timeline and change the length to only be a few frames. Under Opacity, change the blending mode to Add and decrease the opacity to around 70 or 80. You can then animate the opacity from 80 to 0 to make it fade out as well. We added some fun practical effects to lightning impact as well, which can be done in Premiere Pro. These were created with the magic trick called the cut. In between two cuts, I changed my hair, added some smear to my face, and put some smoke into my mouth. One of the oldest tricks in the book, and we also did an advanced tutorial about it a while back, where we copied money like Zack King. The film your subject from a tripod and throw a t-shirt at him. Important is that you make a big move but suddenly freeze. Try to remember how you stand and then put on the shirt that was thrown to you. Go stand back in the same position but rewind a little bit. Start your movement again and pretend like you immediately catch the t-shirt like this. In Premiere Pro, the only thing that you have to do is cut away everything in between and try to match the movements of your actor. Now you can sell the effect better by adding a fake camera motion to it, since everything was shot from a tripod. We've got a free preset pack which you can download from our website, there's a link in the description below. And this works by simply creating an adjustment layer which you can place on top of your entire video, then drag one of the handheld presets to that adjustment layer, e voila. Lorenzo! T-shirt buddies! Catch! Whoa, awesome! T-shirt buddies! Woohoo! And those were the five super easy visual effects inside Premiere Pro. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Audioblocks, for the support. And like always, stay creative. Hey, Lorenzo! T-shirt buddies! Catch! Catch! Catch, Lorenzo! <laughs> Enjoy it! Catch! Got it. Damn it. <laughs>